Today, you will learn how to create a Discord bot just like Rhythm or Fredbo using Discord JS. The music bot will have the following features. Playing a song from search, you can also add songs using the URL and will even cover playing playlists. Other than that, the bot has the usual functions such as skipping the current song, looking at the queue, stopping, pausing the current song, resuming, and of course, exiting the channel. So let's get started. To get this project done, we'll need to download a few things. The very first thing that you'll want to download is FFmpeg, which we'll use to actually play all the songs. All of the links will be in the description. So when you're on this page, just go to whatever operating system you're on and download the binaries. Then if you're on Windows, go to the search and type in environment variables. Open that up, click on environment variables, and then select the path variable. Click on edit and make sure to add the place where you installed FFmpeg into your environment variables and you're after the bin folder and my bin folder looks something like this you should have FFmpeg, FFplay and FFprobe inside the bin folder next up we'll need a code editor in theory you can use any code editor you like but I like to use Visual Studio Code I suggest you use it too because it's one of the best code editors out there just click the download link select the operating system that you're on and go for the default installation. And lastly, we'll need Node.js. Download this again on the site. You've got all the binaries here, so it's a straightforward install. Just go for the default. Next up, you'll want to head over to the Discord developer portal. And inside of here, click on the applications tab. We'll then click on new application and give our bot a name. In our case, it's just gonna be named music bot. Click create. And in here, you can customize a lot of things such as description. If you're making the bot public, you might wanna give it tags so that people can search for it easier. And you might want to give it an avatar. For this step, we'll just skip it because it's not really necessary since we're just testing things out. So you want to head over to the bot section and in here, click on add bot. Yes, do it. And then we'll need to save this token. So click on reset token. Yes, do it. Inside of Visual Studio Code, we're gonna create a .env file that is gonna store all of our environment variables. We'll just say .env. The file has to be named .env because that's how Node recognizes the environment variable files. And we'll say token equals, and then paste the token you just copied from the developer portal. All right, next up, we'll want to define the client ID. So we'll say client ID equals, go back to the developer portal, and under OAuth tab, go to general, and in here, you can copy the client ID. All right, so that's it. We've got all the environment variables set. Back to the developer portal, under OAuth 2, and then URL generator, click on bot, and application commands. And then lastly, give it administrator privileges. If you're creating this bot for production, make sure to select only the things that you really need. Then copy the link that it generates, open up a new tab, and this is just like adding any other bot. You select the channel that you want to add it to, hit continue, authorize, and then confirm that you're not a bot. When you're in the channel over here, you can see that our bot is showing us offline. That is fine for now because we haven't wrote any code. Now we can set up our coding environment. Inside of VS Code, hit Control and then backtick. In here, we want to type in npm init. Now you can go through all these steps and put in whatever versions or descriptions that you want for the package. I'll just give all the defaults, just skip through all of this. And this will generate a package.json. The package.json will store all of our packages that we want to install. If you're familiar with Python, this is similar to requirements.txt file that stores all of the dependencies. And we'll need to install the following packages. First of all, we'll install discord.js. So we'll say npm i discord.js. Then we'll say npm i.env. Next we've got discord player. Then discord API types. Discord slash Discord JS slash voice slash rest slash opus and lastly Discord JS slash builders. Now with all of the packages installed, we're gonna create the folder and the file structure. Click on new file and say index.js and we'll want to create a folder that stores all of our commands. So we'll say commands and inside of here, we'll define all of the command files. We'll first say play.js, then we'll have a command for pausing, resuming, showing the queue, skipping the song, exiting the voice channel. That is it for our setup. 
we can now finally get to the code. So the first two files are actually gonna be the longest one, which is the index.js and the play.js. Let's start with the index.js, which is our entry point. We'll first want to import all of the environment variables that we've got in the .end file. We'll say require .end, and what this does, this loads all of the environment variables inside of the process.env, and it will be something like token or client ID inside of here. Next up, we'll want to require all of the Discord JS libraries that we're gonna be using. We'll also need to require some node packages, one for the file system and one for the path. These are gonna be used to load all of the commands from the commands folder. Now we'll need to create the client that is gonna be our bot. Inside of Discord JS, you do this by saying const client equals new client. And in the object, we want to give all of the intents that the bot is gonna be using. You could technically say intents.all like this, but this is not advised. You don't want to just give it all intents, just like you don't want to give it administrator privileges. And we only need three intents, so it's actually fairly simple to specify all the ones that we need. So we'll say flags dot guilds, because we need access to the guilds to see all of the guilds that the bot is inside of. We we'll also want access to the messages. And lastly, we need access to the voice channel. Now let's get a list of all the commands in the commands folder. I am going a little bit fast, I understand that, but if you want the full video of where I walk you through exactly how to set up your slash commands and go fully in depth with it, there's gonna be a link in the description and there should be a link showing up right now in the right hand corner. Let's load all the commands. Right, so just to quickly step over this, the commands array is gonna hold all of the commands in the commands file in a special format, which is just plain old object, which we're gonna see in a moment. And the client.commands is going to store it inside of the collection, which gives us a little bit more access. This is actually a wrapper around the map that is created by Discord.js. It just allows us to treat a map a bit like an array, makes it a bit easier to work with. So now we want to create the player used to play all the songs. And to do this, we use the library Discord player that we've imported earlier on. And this actually makes it really easy to work with all the cues and all the playing of the music, searching YouTube and all of that. So let's create that right now. So we want to store it inside of our client object over here so that any command can access it very easily. So we'll say client.player equals new player. And then we want to give it some options because we want to have the highest quality audio. Now that we've got the player, we want to actually register all of the slash commands with every single server. Again, this is walked through more in the video that I'll link in the description. So I'll just quickly glaze over this. Essentially what we do is we get the guild ID that the bot is currently inside of, and then we register all of the commands that we've loaded from the commands folder by using the REST API that we've imported earlier from Discord.js. And we use the token that we defined inside of our environment variables over here, as well as the client ID later on to register the commands. Now we need to actually execute the command whenever the user types it in. Essentially what we do here is if there's any type of interaction inside of our bot, we want to first check if it's a command. If it's not a command, we're just gonna ignore it and do nothing. Then, remember how we push all of the commands with their name and the command to the client.commands? Well, we use that down here and then we want to get the command name from the interaction. This is why working with collections is so easy because we can just call get, use the command name and we get the command back. And then lastly, we're gonna execute the command, passing in the client, so that we have access to the player that we defined on the client object, as well as the interaction so that we can send the replies back to the chat. Very last thing that, that we need to do is to actually log in our bot. And we do that by saying client.login, and then lastly, passing in our token. And this is it for index.js. The next big one we're gonna cover is the play.js. And I promise you, this is gonna be the last big file. All the other ones are gonna be like 20 lines long and very simple. Okay, so that was quite a bit of right now, but it's actually kind of simple what we're doing here. So essentially, we're defining the slash command builder, and this is how you break it down. First off, what the user would type in here is a slash play, and we give it a description of player songs so that whenever the user types in slash play, they're going to get this helpful message at the bottom saying, for example, searches for a song that it plays. And then we add sub commands. For example, we can say search and then the query, which is going to be the search term that we're gonna search for, for example, a song. And this is what it looks like on Discord. So we can say play search 
and then it gives us the search terms and we can say song. And that is what this add option string does, is it allows us to input some extra stuff into the command. And we just repeat this for the playlist and we also repeat this for the song. So I know it's a lot of code, but actually it makes a lot of sense how it's structured. And next up, what we need to do is create our execute command. If you recall in the index.json, we actually call this with the client and the interaction. And this is what is being passed into here. And we destructure the object that's been passed in. The very first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the user is inside of a voice channel so we can join in the voice channel and start playing the music. If the user is not currently inside of the voice channel, we'll just return a nice little message to them saying that they cannot play the command because they're not in the voice channel. Let's run through all the code that we just wrote. First thing we do is we create the queue on the player that again, we define in our index.js on the player over here. Then we check if we are currently in a voice channel. If we're not in a voice channel, we want to connect to our voice channel and start our queue. Then we want to create an embed because we're gonna be returning the embed with all the songs and everything to the user. And we check if our sub command is song. This is gonna be the first sub command that we're gonna create. And we want to get the URL of the sub command. Again, if you recall, when the user set specifies the URL over here, some song over here, we want to grab whatever the user's input is, then do a search for it by using the search engine, YouTube video. If there are no results returned, then we want to just return straight back from the command and say no results found. And if we found the result, we want to add the song to the track and then return to the user the embed saying that the song has been added with the thumbnail of the song and the footer with the duration. We're gonna do something very similar for the playlists. So I can actually just copy and paste this. And we'll just say playlist. The thing that changes in here is saying, instead of YouTube video, say playlist. And we're gonna say no playlist found. Also want to replace this with playlist. And we need to say add tracks instead of add track. And instead of song, we'll say playlist.title. So lastly, we've got the search for keywords subcommand. So it's gonna be search. And then we had inside of here the option of search terms. So we'll say search terms. And the query type this time is gonna be auto. Again, no results found. And this is gonna be back to song again. And we just replace everything else with the keyword song. Right. So we've got all of our subcommands sorted now. What we can do is we can start playing the music and we do this by saying if we're not already playing something, we want to stop playing. And lastly, we'll just return the embed back to the user with all of our information like the description, the thumbnail and everything else. Those are the two most complicated files. Now we move on to the easy stuff. We'll now quickly run over how you can implement the skip command. We'll want to grab the very first two imports from our, from our play command. And again, we'll do module.exports. And we'll need to add the execute command. Inside of here, we first need to grab the queue from the client object and we specify the guild that we are currently in. If you've got the bot running on multiple servers, you only want to get the queue of the one that this bot is currently on. We want to check if there's anything currently in the queue, because if there isn't, we just say there's nothing currently in the queue, so we can't really skip anything. And this is where this Discord player library really comes into play, because all we have to do to skip a song in the queue or pause a song or do anything with it, we just call a function. We just say q.skip, q.stop, q.resume, and it's as simple as that. Next command that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing the pause command, and we can literally copy and paste all of that code, replace all of the names like with pause, so it pauses the current song. We literally say set paused to true. We're not gonna return an embed, we're just gonna say back saying, actually we can get rid of this. We're just gonna go back saying that the current song has been paused. We'll copy this over, go into our resume command. Instead of saying set pause to true, we'll just say set pause to false. Set name to resume. As simple as that, like I told you, very quick and easy. We've just got two more commands to go. The next one up is the Q command. This one is a little bit different to the skip and pause. We can copy all apart from the set description, all the way to the top, over to our set command. Fortunately, I've got GitHub Copilot installed, so it literally gives me the suggestions for everything that I need. It thinks that I'm trying to write the skip command again. Uh, I'm not trying to do that. Let's say Q. What this command is going to do is it's going to show the first 10 songs that are in our queue. The very first thing we want to check for is if we've currently got a queue or if we're playing anything. 
so this code might be a little bit confusing, but essentially what we do is we go through all of the songs that are in our queue, and we're just gonna take the, the first 10 of them. Then we're gonna loop over each one of those songs and we're gonna return a string. Now this string is gonna look something like this. First song, we're gonna say one, because the index of the first song is zero and we add one to it. And then the duration of it is gonna be inside of our brackets, which might be like three minutes. Then we're gonna put in our title of the song, which might be the sign. And then lastly, who requested the song. So in my case, it might be Compute Shorts. And it's gonna put all of the highlighting so when you click on it, it's actually gonna display the user profile. This is why we've got the at sign and the less than and greater signs. And then once it goes through the first song, it's gonna add the backslash N at the end because the map is gonna actually return an array of all of these. And then we're gonna join with backslash N. So it's just a way of formatting everything together. We also want to display the current song whenever the user types in the Q command. So we'll just get the current song. And lastly, we'll return the embed showing all of this information. So we've got a bit of a long string here. You might want to pause if you want to copy this over and we'll set the thumbnail for the current song. And that is our queue command done. We've got just one more to go, which is the exit command. For this one, we can actually copy over our pause code. And instead of saying set paused, we'll say dot destroy. You can give a file message saying like, why, why are you kicking me out? And the destroy function, just gets rid of everything that's in the queue and then kicks the bot from the voice channel. And we also want to make sure to set the correct names like exit. That is everything that we actually need. That is all the code. Now let's try to run it inside our terminal and see if we made any errors. So we'll say node and then dot, press enter. And of course we get error. But fortunately, it's not too bad because it allows me to show you how you can debug your code. So when we look further into this error message, it says that there's something wrong on line 10 in our play.js command. And we've got this sub command over here and I realized what I did. What I did wrong is we're actually supposed to return the option back to the add string. So we can either say return over here or we can just get rid of the brackets and it's an implicit return. And then we can get rid of the return statement. So I need to get rid of that. And we just need to do this for all of the sub commands. Now let's try to run this again. We actually need to do the same thing for the sub commands. We're making some progress. We got a different error message now. And here we can say it's something in the index.js. I've realized what the error was. It's saying that the, we've got an invalid form body. And what we had in here, when we were loading the commands, we were just saying a command. And that was just like a plain object that is not understandable for this code. So what we have to say is dot data and then to JSON. And that is going to translate the slash command builder into JSON. Let's try to give that a go now. And it says that it added commands to the client ID. So it's been successful. If we go into here, we see our music bot is online. So now we can try out our commands. We'll say play, search, and then, I don't know, just say song error while executing the command. And we get more errors. It's saying it's something on line 44 of our play.js file. What I can see in here, we've definitely misspelled something. We've misspelled member. So control save that. And let's try it once more. This is why I love coding especially when it's live. You always get some stuff that's wrong and you definitely get spelling mistakes like I can see right here. So this time it's on line 50. I'm just gonna have to go through all of my code and I'm not gonna bore you with all of this debugging because I just misspelled a bunch of words. If you're having same sort of issues, I am gonna have all of this code on GitHub so you can download it straight away. Or if you don't even wanna bother with code, I'm gonna create Docker containers as well. I finally got our bot to work. And there was actually one more error that is probably worth mentioning. If you get this error, ffmpeg avcon, first of all, make sure that you're running Node at least the latest version, which is 16.15 or 18 or anything above it should work. And if that doesn't fix the error, try to install in the ffmpeg static package by saying npm i ffmpeg static. By the way, I got this off the internet by literally typing out the error that I got and then looking on Stack Overflow. That's the game, isn't it? Just copy and paste things off Stack Overflow and it should work. So now when we do node dot, all the commands have been added. We can say play, search, and then the search term like song. It takes a little while, but the music does get added to the queue and we can see that the music bot is playing. I've muted the bot because uh, I don't want to get copyright strikes. And of course we can add more songs to it. This time I'm going to use a URL and type that in and we can see that also works. And we can say slash queue to see everything that's currently in the queue. You might want to reformat this to make it look a bit nicer. I am going to reformat this before I upload it to GitHub. And we can also skip the current song. We can pause, you can see that it stopped playing and we can resume. There we go. And finally, we can of course exit out of the voice channel 
and everything works fine. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe. If you want to see other bots, just leave it in the comments. Or if you want to see how to deploy this to AWS to have your bot running 24-7. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.